Well, thank you, Jenny. Well, after uh, that excellent speech by uh, Dr. Victor Fung, this is, he's a bit of a tough act to follow, I've got a rather drier presentation for you. And firstly, my apologies. This is not the standard sales pitch for Hong Kong, mainly because most of you guys could probably do it even better than I do, and most of you have lived and know Hong Kong very well, so I'm not going to dwell on the sales messages too much. This presentation was actually developed for a heads of government department meeting where I was trying to get across to my colleagues exactly who we are and what we do because there is a certain level of, a uh, certain lack of understanding about what Invest Hong Kong is all about, even within the government. But because it's aimed at a government audience, it's a little bit dry. So I'm going to run through the slides fairly quickly and I'd like to leave the rest of this session for a little bit of discussion, but a discussion about what we could be doing better and how we could support you in better promoting Hong Kong as a business location to your members and beyond your membership. Okay. Firstly, and firstly, mission and objectives. I'm not going to read through all these, but basically what Invest Hong Kong is, is we are a government department 100% funded by the government, but we are unusual in that most of my colleagues are not civil servants. Most of my colleagues come from the private sector and work in the sector teams that they're, where they're trying to attract investment from. So the head of our financial services team used to work for GE Capital. The head of our transportation and industrial team used to work for DHL, and so on. So we like to think we're a little bit different from the rest of the government. But our role is simple. Our role is to attract and then assist companies from all around the world, including, of course, the mainland and Taiwan, to get them to come and set up in Hong Kong, and to encourage the companies that are already here to upgrade and expand their presence in Hong Kong. Why do we do it? Well, I guess most of you know that investment promotion is uh, about attracting foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment is enormously important to most economies, but it's particularly important to Hong Kong. We are incredibly dependent on foreign direct investment. 269% uh, of our GDP in 2000 and 433% of GDP in 2009. Uh, was the ratio of uh, foreign direct investment stock to GDP. Hugely dependent. And 17% of our workforce are directly employed by foreign and mainland companies, but indirectly many, many more. Because all those companies use local services, local companies to provide them with outsourcing support, and that creates indirect employment. A little bit about the results, what we measure. Uh, firstly, when it comes to uh, foreign direct investment flows, uh, you'll probably know that Hong Kong receives the second highest amount of foreign direct investment in Asia. And last year, for the first time, we received the fourth largest amount of foreign direct investment in the world, just behind the United States, mainland China, and France. And that's for an economy of only 7 million people. We're not only the second largest recipient of foreign direct investment in our region. We are also the second largest outward investor after Japan in East Asia. And of course, much of that investment goes into the mainland, but it's also going from the mainland through Hong Kong around the world. And if you go to virtually every leading city in the mainland, every leading province and ask them who is the number one investor, they'll say Hong Kong. But of course, that doesn't just mean indigenous Hong Kong companies. It means the Canadian, the Swedish, the American, the Taiwanese companies that are using their Hong Kong subsidiary to make investments into the mainland. You'll have heard that the government has earmarked a number of sectors, a number of pillar industries that they want to focus on. We've restructured our departments so that each one of those pillar industries falls within one of our eight teams. And this is a list of our, our eight sector teams. Uh, basically, any company will fall into one of those eight areas. 
any company. The challenge actually is not finding which team a company will go into, which team a companies uh, will, will be handled by, but the challenge is sometimes to decide between teams, because often a company will fall into more than one of those eight areas. Our representation, well, we're spread very thinly around the world. Everywhere that we have a sizable economic and trade office, a sizable government office overseas, we have a small investment promotion unit working within that office. Whether it's London or New York or Sydney or Tokyo, in those cities we have a small team. But elsewhere, in markets like France, in the Nordic countries, in Korea, we use part-time consultants. Consultants who work for us on a performance-related contract basis, who assist us by acting as our eyes and ears on the ground, identifying companies that we can bring into Hong Kong. And how do we do it? Well, people assume that we do a lot of promotion. We do a fair amount of promotion. But the real work of investment promotion is about targeting individual companies. And every year, we go out and actually sit down and meet with well over 5,000 companies overseas. And to get to, uh, get, to get over 5,600 companies to agree to meet with us requires even more telemarketing, direct mailing, and so on to get those sort of numbers up. Huge amount of work. And of those 5,000 companies, we identify a number that are planning an expansion in East Asia. And those we will consider a prospect. And uh, in 2009, we helped about 1,200 companies uh, that we could classify as prospects. And then the moment we can get one of those prospects to come and visit Hong Kong, with a plan to expanding their business in our region, we'll count them as a project. That number was around 667 last year. This year it's even higher. And then the final measure that we all look at is the number of companies that we actually help to set up and expand in a given year. Last year we helped 265. This year our target is 270, but we've already completed well over 280 projects so far this year. In terms of promotion, well, we do a lot of events. We join with the TDC to do seminars overseas. We do a lot of events on our own. We do a lot of events with partner cities from the Pearl River Delta, whether it's uh, the, the, the province of Guangdong, whether it's Guangzhou, whether it's Shenzhen. We do a lot of events with those cities, and it's a kind of double act. Put your command and control type functions in Hong Kong, put your land or labor intensive activities just over the board, border in Shanghai, sorry, in uh, Shenzhen or, or, uh, or Dongguan, or Shanghai for that matter. We're also trying to do more events here in Hong Kong, events aimed at particular sectors where we can help the companies that we've already attracted to Hong Kong to find new business opportunities by meeting with other companies. And we often do that in partnership with industry associations and with the local chambers of commerce. Over the past year, we've changed our branding a little bit. Our old branding, which is the sort of orangey yellow branding, was fine, but it didn't really show that we were a government department. And when we'd give out our name cards with the old Invest Hong Kong brand, we'd have to waste about 10 or 15 minutes explaining that we weren't going to try and sell them financial service products, we weren't going to invest in their company, and that we were actually a, not, a government department that wouldn't charge them. So we changed our logo, and we really emphasized the fact by using the Bahinia emblem, the fact that we are a government department, and it saves us a lot of time. But I try and get my colleagues to show through the way they interact with companies that they are not typical government employees. Our branding is quite simple. Hong Kong, the right place, and now is definitely the right time for companies to expand here. So examples of some ads that we've used both here and uh, overseas. This obviously is aimed at attracting foreign companies to use Hong Kong to access the mainland market opportunities. 
And this is the other way around. This is using Hong Kong, if you're a mainland company, to reach the rest of the world, to go global. We also use some slightly cheekier ones. This is one we use for a lot of the chamber directories about professional help. If you can't see the benefits of expanding your business in Hong Kong, you probably need professional help. And if you can, we'd like to offer you our professional help. The uh, Venn diagrams, a bit small here, they're very useful because one of the key attributes of Hong Kong is that Hong Kong is a city of contrasts. East and West, renminbi, US dollar, uh, there are many, many things that you can use in these Venn diagrams to get across Hong Kong's unique positioning. And these are where we've shown these ads. The taxi campaign was very good. We, uh, we were one of the first organizations to advertise on the taxis in Hong Kong, and the coloring of our logo fits very well with the taxis. Uh, we paid uh, to put these on taxis for one month in July. We still had them on the taxis in September, so it was very good value for money. <laughs> some examples of companies we help. Uh, well, we help some of the biggest companies in the world, companies like Walmart to put their regional headquarters here in Hong Kong. Suning, one of the largest retailers in mainland China. We've helped to come here. Ica from Scandinavia, a big buying office here, and so on. But we also help a lot of smaller companies. And the, the, the trend that we notice is that we're helping smaller, high-growth companies, often from creative industries, that are looking to expand in East Asia. And the more quirky companies we have, Intuitive Automata, which is a, a robot that you have in your home that helps you... Uh, regulate what you eat, perhaps rather an annoying product, but uh, certainly uh, very in, in, uh, innovative. Um, we also have the Eighth Estate Winery, Hong Kong's only wine producer out in uh, Aplay Chow, and of course Li Ning, which is a leading sports brand uh, in the mainland, uh, built around the branding of our, our fame, an Olympic gymnast from mainland China. So how do we help investors? Well. In the early stages, when we sit down and talk to an entrepreneur uh, about his plans or her plans for expanding in the region, it's about providing information. But it's about providing information that enables an entrepreneur to make an informed choice. This is not a hard sell. We want people to come to Hong Kong when they're ready. We want them to put the right part of their business in Hong Kong. And we want them to start often small, and to grow their business as the, their business develops in our region. So it's not a hard sell. We want to build a, a relationship of trust, and that means about providing them not with a whole load of information at the beginning, drip feeding them with information and advice often over a period of time, sometimes three or four years before they're ready to make that move and set up a, a presence in Hong Kong. And then when they're ready to expand our job is to provide them with practical support. Support in finding the right business service providers, support in getting visas, uh, support in getting children into the school of their choice, no easy, no easy matter at this, at this particular time, uh, and support in getting media coverage and, and contacts once they're already here. All of that support, of course, is 100% free of charge. All the discussions we have with companies we treat as strictly confidential, even within government. We've been going for 10 years now, and this shows how the number of projects, how the number of companies that we've assisted each year has steadily grown. This year, as I said, will be no exception. It'll be an all, another all-time high. Um, and you can see that we've grown steadily over the past decade to, to helping nearly 300 companies a year. And cumulatively, over the last decade, uh, where we've got a celebration next Monday on the 6th, but we'll be celebrating the fact that we have helped over 2,000 companies to set up in Hong Kong. And those companies have directly generated 25,000 jobs in Hong Kong. A point I'd like to make, though, is that investment promotion is not a solo sport. Up to a point, we could do it all ourselves. But to be truly effective as an economy and as a department in terms of attracting companies to set up, we need to work with partners. And I'd say this year more than ever before, we've been partnering with the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. We've been doing a lot of work with the uh, 
the federation around the world, the, the, business, uh, the business associations in key cities around the world. We work very closely with the private sector, with accounting firms, banks as well, to help them get across the message that Hong Kong is a great business location. So we pride ourselves on building these networks, and then when companies are in Hong Kong, we work very closely with the chambers to make sure that they can benefit from joining their local national chamber and to make sure that they can meet other companies that they can do business with. Future trends, well, the trends that we notice are that the average size of an investment is getting smaller. The average size is just over 10 or 12 direct employees in the first year of operation, but we don't mind that because often small and medium-sized enterprises, when they get their business model right, can grow very, very quickly. And secondly, even if a fund manager comes in and only employs five people to start with, as I said before, indirectly, they're employing a lot more people. They're using local accountants, local service providers, local restaurants, local cleaners, and that is creating indirect employment too. Mainland, well, we put a lot of emphasis on attracting mainland companies, obviously not to use Hong Kong as the gateway to China, but to use Hong Kong as that springboard to go global. And we've got a growing number of companies that are coming to us to help them to set up here for that purpose. So we're putting more emphasis there, but we're also putting a bit more emphasis on the developing markets. We don't anticipate a huge growth in the terms of the number of companies that we help from the BRIC economies, but longer term, we recognize that there's gonna be tremendous trade and investment flows between Brazil, between Russia, between India, and places like Indonesia as well, and the mainland. And we've got to make sure Hong Kong plays a, plays a part in that relationship. So that's it. Please get in touch if you think we can support you. We would like to use you as our investment promotion ambassadors. I've got two colleagues here I'd like to just point out to you who are from our new international operations team, and their job is to provide you with ammunition, information, PowerPoint slides, whatever you need to convince people that Hong Kong's a good location. And I'll just point out uh, Alison and Elsie over here. They're both from our international operations team, and they're ready to help you if you want to get their cards later on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Galpin. Please remain on stage. May I now invite Mrs. Wallace to the stage to moderate the Q&A session for us. Mrs. Wallace, please.